What's up everybody? Brett here and I'm back today casting another Total War Warhammer 2 replay. Subscriber submitted by my buddy Triari and he's going to be going up against the infamous Grumpy Guard. So I'm going to get something out of the way real quick right up front. I like this battle. I chose to cast this battle because we get to see a unit that I feel like is one of the most troll units in the game. Specifically the Ravagers of Rakarth. We get to see what happens to them in this particular battle. So Poison AoE 360 fire, no scoping people. It's almost impossible to catch up to them. They have anti large, and when you pair them with a standard Scourge Runner chariot, they can do devastating damage versus any large target. So, like I said, before we get underway, let me uh, go ahead and talk about what will be the elephant in the room. These harpies are forgotten for the entire battle. Okay? Just, they're non factor, they're uh, casual observers. But I will say, had they been in this battle, the odds would have been perhaps much more in the Dark Elves' favor. They really needed them in this battle, considering Triari decided to go with aerial superiority. So I played a lot of games with and against Triari, and one thing that I know about him, two, th well, three things. Let's go with three. He loves High Elves. He loves Dragon Princes, of which he brought two. And who doesn't love them? Look how awesome they look. And he loves aerial superiority. And that's something that I value as well. And he's going with a Flamespire Phoenix, and two Sun Dragons. So you've got the two cheaper variant of the Sun Dragons. I like this a lot. And upon my first thought whenever I loaded up this video the first time was, I think he's on to something here in a Dark Elf matchup. Uh, I love the Flamespire Phoenixes. I think they're an underrated pick uh, for several reasons, but the main one being their speed. At 120 speed, if I can just stay hovered over them for a second, they can catch anything they might be the fastest unit in the game I'm, I'm pretty sure they are fire and magical damage can be relevant uh, when you're going up against physical resistance stuff like that regeneration uh, but for the most part I would value them for their speed and I was thinking I wonder how much gold it would save uh, to just grab maybe three flamespire phoenixes or two flamespire one frost heart switch up these dragons maybe have even enough left over for an extra archer unit that was kind of my tweak on this build I'm sure Triari has his reasons it's nice to have heavy hitters and damaged sponges like the Sun Dragons. I mean, with 4,500 HP, they can absorb a lot of punishment. Cheap front line of spears, two value archers, and then Teclas here with his standard kit. He's got regrowth, he's got nets, you know, he's got the Potion of Troy, which will probably come in handy uh, at some point, considering on the other side of the battlefield, standard Dread Spears in the front, like the way they've been positioned, taking advantage of this bit of terrain here on this map, to really deny an entire flank to the High Elf player. Uh, they are definitely on the defensive, the Dark Elves are, because they have brought not one, not two, but three Reaper Bolt Throwers, and they've got their work cut out for them. Unfortunately for them, these archers are getting right into range. High Elf archers sitting at, I think it's 180, yeah, 180 range, and they're nearly there already, so they'll be able to counter skirmish. Uh, at 700 apiece, the Reaper Bolt Throwers have to do a lot in order to get their value. And their best targets, their most obvious targets, are going to be the slower moving, larger Sun Dragons, as opposed to the Flamespire Phoenixes. We've got some Calf here, we've got Light Calf, in the form of Dark Riders with Shields, could be very good at harassing back line if they're able to do that. Um, or just eating a charge for the much superior, that's pretty redundant, but the very superior, also redundant, <laughs> Knights of the Ebon Claw, the Dread Knights. So these regiments of renown, not anti-large. But their armor piercing is huge. Let's see if we can hover over them here. Armor piercing damage, 34 of the 48 being armor piercing. That is incredible. So they can pretty much chew through anything with armor. And I don't know if they're a great matchup versus the Dragon Princes. It's probably honestly kind of even considering how expensive they are. Uh, pretty sure the Fireborn take them to school considering they do have anti-large. Uh, on the magic end of the spectrum, we've got a Sorceress, the Lore of Shadow. Uh, looks like... Feebling foe, a couple debuffs there, uh, but Zark in here. Let's take a look at him. Look how awesome he looks. He's such a cool model. Uh, he's got his two passives here, the Damon's Curse and the Blood Price. This does an AoE debuff. This does an incredible buff to him. And we'll see. I see Grumpy Guard. He uses it incredibly at one point here to go for an Alpha Strike. And we'll see how that pays off. But Triari is advancing in every direction. Infantry on infantry, he's moving his archers into position to start taking shots at these Reaper Bolt Throwers. The Sun Dragons, we'll see if they get any breath attacks off, but at the moment they're kind of busy dodging. These Ravages of Rakarth, 
they are using their poison to slow the speed of all of these units. The Flamespire Phoenix got in here, got a little antsy, got poisoned, and then we're surrounded by the Dark Riders. The Scourge Runner Chariots and the Dark Riders using their mass to keep him on the ground and to use Malice Dark Blade's incredible weapon strength uh, to take them down. I actually like charging Teclas in here. Let's see what happens. Net of Amnitok, get smashed, you damn Ravagers of Rakkarth. That's one way to deal with them, and probably the best way. Net them down, surround them. There's no anti-large here, uh, but dragons are coming. So, who knows? These Knights of the Ebon Claw uh, went for a frontal charge, but they'll be pulled back in a second here. Let's see what happens. We got a Flame Breath down the line. That's brutal. Those Dread Spears are gone. But at the same time, the Triari was focused on microwing this Sun Dragon. Malice Darkblade came in with the Blood Price and Occam's Mind Razor. Huge damage bonus. Up to 946 weapon strength. Look at that hit. Enfeebling Foe also being cast, making sure that his melee defense down to 4. He's going to need to pop the Potion of Troy to get that regen, to get that ward save. And that'll probably be the only thing that saves him there. I know he had popped it previously. We've got some of the Reaper Bolt Throwers shattered offline. Scourge Runner Chariot standard are still on the battlefield, but the, the Ravagers have been driven off by the Sun Dragon. The Archer is just allowed to tee off here. The infantry battle is won. Oh, man. Yeah, that was pretty damn good. But had Treari not be on, been on top of his micro, he would have lost many, many more spearmen in that fight. Good pendulum there from the Dark Elf player. Sorcerer is kind of just sitting in the pocket, but the Dragon Princes are going to find her. A fiery invocation here. Not really much value to get. Uh, they're kind of clumped here up here. Let's see the damage. I mean, that's great damage. That's 50%. And a Dragon Breath here is going to swing and a miss. Malice was on the move. Had he stayed still, though, probably had a really good chance of landing that. Teclas here was driving off some of these Spearmen for a second. Now we've got a Net of Amnitok and a chance to goon out Malice. So he's in trouble. Two Sun Dragons is more than a match for him. If he's able to pop Zarkin, and here he goes. So he pops Zarkin. He gets a full heal. Kind of hard to hover over him. Sorry about that. Uh, but he gets a full heal, and he's free of the net, and now he's going to go straight for Teclas. Unfortunately for him, he's at 68 speed, while Teclas is at 78. So, if he keeps running, he should be able to stay away. That's not enough of a... That's not a close enough gap in speed in order for him to catch him on the acceleration of a charge. It needs to be a little bit slower than that. But these Scourge Runners are still online, they're still taking pot shots. But Triari is a veteran player. What do you do when you're getting chased and there's nothing you can do about it? You screen. You use your cheap Spearman to screen out Malice. So watch Malice. He's trying to charge into Teclas. So he completely, like, bounces off the Spearman wall. He's going to use Bloodstorm here to get that damage resistance. He also explodes some of these infantry. You'll see all the dead guys laying around. Uh, that's definitely courtesy of Bloodstorm. Uh, but these archers have done their work. Uh, they've taken offline all of the bolt throwers. Who were probably the best answer for the Sun Dragon. The Flamespire Phoenix, we missed it, but it got reborn. It came back to life at full HP, and that's going to be enough to tilt the balance of power way into Triari's favor. Once again, had the Harpies been in the battle, perhaps things would have been different. Um, you could have used them to tie down the Sun Dragons. Uh, they're very good at that. could have used them to kill both of the Archers, thus preventing the deaths of the Reaper Bolt Throwers. You know, micro mistakes happen. And sometimes, I haven't done this in a while, but I used to cast a lot of games that had a lot of mistakes. Sometimes mine, sometimes from the people I was playing against, sometimes from other people. Uh, but you can always learn from your mistakes. That was a simple forgetting something in the corner. He had good intentions. He Vanguard deployed uh, units that would have been amazing in this battle. Uh, they would have prevented all of these kills, probably wiped out both archers. And at the very least, would have forced perhaps the Dragon Princes to play more defensively, keep them in the back line uh, to prevent that type of harassment. Meanwhile, your Cav, as the Dark Elf player, runs rampant. And, you know, at the end of the day, you have to devote something else as a High Elf player to try and take out these Reaper Bolt Throwers. Otherwise, your Sun Dragons are going to get torn to pieces. Your Cav's going to get torn to pieces. Yeah, one little change like that could have had a huge impact. And if I was going to, I don't know, make any type of critique, I will say, though, if you're a newer player and you find that sometimes micro isn't your strongest suit and you're not particularly trying to get better, you're just trying to win a battle, take spells that you can't miss. You know, take spells like uh, 
Melkos Mystifying Miasma. That's a point and click spell. Take stuff like Flock of Doom. You know, point and click spells are your friend. Take, take, uh... Anything that doesn't require a lot of micro, I probably would not have gone with three Reaper Bolt Throwers here. I think that's a bit excessive. For the price of two of these, I would probably... Let's see, that's 1400 For two of these, you could have had three Dark Shards. Uh, no Shields, of course. It's about, it's, about that same, it's about that same cost. Three Dark Shards would have been brutal this battle. Uh, that's something you could spread out, take shots. I mean, these are just... These are after the, the fact critiques. Maybe Grumpy Guard was trying out a different build. Uh, but it was a fun battle, and I appreciate Triari for sending it. I appreciate Grumpy Guard for being a good sport and being a good opponent. Guys, if you would like to send me any of your replays, feel free to do so. All you have to do is join the Discord and send me any type of any type of replay that you would like. Uh, just make sure it's on the newest patch, because that makes it easier for me to, uh, to check it out. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. And as always, y'all, I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.